Diagnosis and treatment of the sacroiliac joints can be performed in a variety of ways and should be considered for a multitude of reasons, including low back pain, pelvic pain, or visceral complaints from the abdominal pelvic region, among others. The sacroiliac joints are two joints within the pelvic girdle, which provide stable support for the upper body and allows for a transfer of forces from the lower extremities during gait. This combination of synovial and syndesmotic joints is comprised of the articulating surfaces of S1, S2, and S3 sacral segments, and the ilium, whose surfaces are covered in fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage, respectively. The SI joint develops from a flat, round-shaped joint, becoming roughened with age as an inverted, backward-facing L, with a short superior arm and a longer inferior arm. The capsule of the joints is comprised of the anterior, posterior, and interosseous sacral ligaments, and supported by numerous other ligaments, including the sacrospinous and sacrotuberous ligaments. The ASIS compression test is utilized to determine which sacroiliac joint is restricted and is performed with the patient lying supine on the table. A physician stands at the side of the table with the dominant eye closest to the patient and lightly places one hand on each ASIS. A gentle force is applied in a posterior medial direction through the AS on the side being tested, noting the ability of the SI joint to gap and then relaxing the pressure. This process is then repeated on the other SI joint, again noting the ability of the SI joint to gap. A positive test is indicated by the SI joint that has the least gapping motion available. Osteopathic manipulative treatment is aimed at the SI joint with the restricted motion. One technique to address restricted sacroiliac joint is the lumbosacral pelvic fascia supine direct or indirect technique. This technique is considered to be a myofascial release technique. Begin the treatment by sitting beside the patient at the level of the pelvis, facing toward the head of the table. The patient lifts their pelvis until the sacrum is able to place one hand directly under the sacrum. The patient lowers their pelvis onto the hand and may keep their knees bent or, we'll show you as a second option, can straighten their legs onto the table. The physician's other hand is placed across the anterior pelvis with the forearm contacting one ASIS and the fingers contacting the other ASIS. A gentle medial pressure is introduced into both ASIS through the forearm and fingers until motion of the sacrum is palpated. This medial pressure allows for increased mobility of the sacrum by gapping of the SI joints. Using the hand on the sacrum, the physician can evaluate for asymmetry of motion, including observing for sacral somatic dysfunction, such as restriction in right and left rotation, or right and left torsion. Treatment may be performed by moving indirectly to the ease or directly into the side of restriction and held until a release is palpated. Alternatively, Treatment may be performed by augmenting flexion and extension of the sacrum. In this way, pressure is maintained until the sacral motion becomes symmetrical and restrictions are released. The ASIS compression test is then repeated to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatment. The anatomy, physiology, and biomechanics of the pelvis are complex as evidenced by the multiple diagnosis and treatment approaches that are utilized by osteopathic physicians. Each approach addresses different aspects of the region and no single approach covers all the possible somatic dysfunctions. The technique presented is directed at the biomechanical aspect of the sacroiliac joints, although increased SI joint motion may produce a variety of effects.